going to put this guy up here. He'll make a little bit more sense towards the end of the presentation. Uh, so yeah, my name is David Beaumont. I'm from Box Hill TAFE, um, or Box Hill Institute, actually. It's now called. Uh, and my presentation is on engaging secondary school learners at Yarra Rangers Tech School. And I'm just going to refer to it as YRTS because it's a bit of a mouthful. So first of all, I thought I'd give you a quick background about the Yarra Rangers Tech School. So the Victorian government um, invested $128 million to develop 10 tech schools around the state of Victoria. And the aim of these tech schools was to uh, prepare high school students for future careers by introducing them to uh, up and coming technologies such as virtual reality, uh, 3D printing, robotics and electronics. And uh, I guess we also want to get the students to look at the real, real world applications of these technologies as well. So in mid-2016, uh, we did, we, our team began designing the curriculum uh, for the Yarra Rangers Tech School and the aim was to roll out a trial version of the high-tech hospital scenario uh, in early December. So I'm part of the multimedia team, so I'm a multimedia designer um, and our job was to be able to create a vibrant, fun and engaging online learning environment. Um, <clears throat> the user interface had to be clean and easy to use as the students would be completing some of the pre-learning activities uh, before coming into the tech school. And the site also had to be tablet friendly as well. Um, as when the students were in the tech school, they'd actually been using, they'd be using tablets to work through the instructions for the main challenges. And I apologise um, for any dog lovers out there. I'm a cat person, so <laughs> just putting it out there. Uh, so three mock-ups were designed, um, and this is one that, that was chosen. Uh, a separate instance of Moodle was created and we use a clean theme as a basis and kind of built from there. We integrated some uh, JavaScript libraries and some other assets as well just to speed up uh, build time. So as you can see as well, we kind of went for you know, quite vibrant, bright colours. Um, we went for a mixture of uh, photographs and also vector graphics as well. Um, all the vector graphics are quite um, kind of comical as well because um, we're obviously trying to design for year 8, 9 and 10 students. As you can see here on the front page we've got a, a tab menu as well. The My, My Workspace tab is the, the main menu which students will be working out of. Across the top we just have a few links off to site pages and as you scroll down, uh, there's links off to the courses which the students are enrolled in. Uh, so the sites are also responsive as well. So uh, this is just an example of the desktop view. Uh, go down to like a tablet size view and also down to mobile device as well. Although not, not many students would be actually accessing this content on their mobile, be more, more so for tablets and desktop. Uh, we also wanted to create a more visual experience for students when they first entered the course. Um, so we came up with this idea of creating a graphic which was meant to be a little bit, a bit of fun and not too serious, but it contained um, objects that related to the, um, the pre-learning activities. So for example, this, um, this course was the Insectoids Sewer ch Challenge. And um, we had a topic about biomimicry, and so that was represented by the little uh, fish, uh, which is swimming around in the fish bowl. And another topic was also Arduinos. Um, so we had a little boring drill, which was a Arduino operated. So this was just a HTML block positioned at the, the top of the course. Uh, with a little bit of custom HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript to get the uh, course search working. 
Uh, we also went for a grid format as well for navigation, just for ease of use on tablets. Uh, this was something that was developed internally as well a while ago for our other instance of Moodle. Uh, so we just kind of adapted that. But the way that this works is it uh, a bit of JavaScript just loops through all the sections in the course and it takes the title and the description and creates these buttons which then link off to the first page in, in that section. Um, there's also dividers as well. So if the, if the section is kept empty with no description, it creates a divider for you. So background briefings is just an example of a divider. So we have kind of a sections and subsections. And the reason why we did that is because students uh, and teachers would be doing things off site and then they would be coming in to do things on site. And we wanted to make that really clear as to what, what they had to do off site and on site. So uh, we had a learning designer uh, with us, and she's, she's just left, actually, to go to another job, which was disappointing. But uh, she was really passionate about gamification, and she encouraged us to, to look at gamification and ways that we could quickly embed it into Moodle. Um, and our time frames were like, quite short as well, so um, we couldn't do anything crazy and super fancy. Um, so. We came up with the idea of taking this initially static scene and making it into an interactive scene. So initially when the student enters the course, the scene is empty, and as they work through the pre-learning activities, the scene then starts to get populated with different objects. And these objects are, hopefully this works, are animated as well, so they're just on a a loop animation which goes for either five to ten seconds and they're also clickable as well so the student can then see what they've been rewarded that object for so for example uh, this one here you have successfully completed the biomimicry section your reward is the filter o fish a state of the art uh, soil filtration system does a job no human wants to do so the guys in the multimedia team had a good time um, coming up with the names for these things. So hopefully the students enjoyed it as much as we did. So uh, these are some examples of other scenes. So the top one is a high tech hospital challenge, and the bottom one is the wearables challenge. And so the way that we created these scenes is first of all creating the assets in Illustrator. Uh, some of them were purchased as well, just to speed up development time. Um, once we created them in Illustrator, we then imported them into After Effects, and we animated, um, or did the animation in After Effects. And there is a plugin called Sheeta, uh, which is like Cheetah but with an S, and that allows you to export these as sprites. Um, then. In order to play it in the browser, we use the, a JavaScript library called Collie. And so if, for those of you who doesn't, don't know what a sprite is, it's literally just a, a series of images you know, in a straight line. And you kind of have a window, and that kind of moves along, and it looks like an animation as it kind of moves along, because it's not showing everything at the same time. I might make a bit more sense later when I show you another so slide. Uh, we also made use of um, the certificate plugin in Moodle. So students were required to um, do a work permit before they came to the tech school. And the work permit was just like a safety quiz. So it was kind of like um, when you go to construction site, you need your white card. But for this one, that they, they needed their work permit before they could come in and use the equipment. So once they completed the quiz, um, we did um, we released this for them to print. And we also use the certificate plugin as well to generate certificates as well once they've completed each of the challenges. Um, <clears throat> also, you might have noticed in the scene that we had little avatars standing off to the left. Um, so 
because we didn't have a lot of development time um, and we couldn't allow the users to you know, fully create their own avatar and customise it, we just came up with a number of different generic avatars. Uh, we had a mixture, an even mixture of boys and girls, uh, robots and animals. And hopefully having a big enough variety that you know, at least one of them is going to appeal to, to the user. Again, these are, so this is kind of what a sprite looks like, I guess. Um, these ones were just created in Illustrator, not taking them over to After Effects because the animation is quite simple. It's literally just the, um, the guy or the girl's eyes opening and closing just to give them a bit of, bit of life. Oh, actually, one other thing I wanted to mention about avatars is that once um, the users selected the avatars in you know, their avatar in the scene, that then gets saved to the database, and wherever they go in Moodle, that avatar will appear. So um, another thing which was developed was a self-reflection survey, which gave instant feedback. Um, so the user works through a number of questions, um, just assessing themselves on how they went during the challenges. And when they get to the end, uh, it spurts out uh, their results. So it tells them what, what their strengths were, what their weaknesses were. And then there's also some, um, some mapping towards potential future careers for the students as well. Uh, they can also see their results in a visual format. So I've just got like an interactive graph here. So when they kind of hover over the different sections, um, they can see what, what they were good at and what maybe they could improve on. And this was all developed by um, the other guy who's in the multimedia team who's extremely talented. And I promise I wouldn't mention his name because he's a little bit shy. But um, he developed this using PHP um, Vue.js, which is a um, lightweight uh, JavaScript framework which allows you to rapidly build user interfaces. So something that, for any of the developers out there, something that might take a few lines of jQuery to, to do, you could then do in just one line of view. And he also used Chart Bundle as well, and that's what's generating these, the, the colorful chart, interactive chart here. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to talk about rapid onboarding as well. And um, so we had a number of different schools coming to the tech school. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the information that we were giving them was, was the same. And um, we thought, well, maybe we could create an animation um, which can then be shown to the students before they enter the tech school. So I'm just going to play you this if I can. And it, it only goes for 20 seconds. But, and that didn't work. Try that again. During your work here, we would like you to work in teams. Each of you should have a specific role in your team. Each team will have a leader, a recorder, and a checker. The leader has the overall responsibility for encouraging participation. So that just kind of gives you an example. Um, again, to create that was just using uh, Illustrator to create the graphics and using some pre-purchased graphics as well to speed up the process and then taking it into After Effects to animate. Um, there's a cool little tool in After Effects called the Puppet Tool which allows you to plot points on, on the graphics body. So I could plot a point on the end of my arm, at the elbow and then at the shoulder and then I can kind of start to move that graphic around and record you know, as I'm moving that graphic around. So that just kind of speeds up the process of creating animation because anyone who's ever tried to do it before, it, it can be quite time consuming. Um, we also had a Jobs, uh, bootstrap tour. Um, you may have seen this before, but uh, all it is is a bit of a JavaScript library which allows the user to do a virtual tour by themselves. 
they just click on the Start Tour button on, up on the right there, and that starts to take them around the web page. And you just have to um, put a blurb in to describe exactly what that thing is, and it will just jump around to the different things and explain it to the user. They can exit the tour at any stage, so it's just a nice little extra to have just to, to get people familiar with your site. So this was the feedback which we got from our students, um, which was pretty good, I think, um, and also from teachers. Again, you know, we were relatively happy with that. Um, although I would like to incorporate into the surveys, I guess, get, get some more information about gamification and some of the things that I've talked about in this presentation and see whether those things are actually increasing student engagement. So that, that's, that's one thing I'm going to look at once I get back to work. And, and at the moment, um, most of the reporting is just done to satisfy government because it's government funded. Um, but I reckon I'd be able to just slip a question in there and no one else would, would know. Although this is being recorded, so I probably shouldn't have said that. And last of all, thank you very much for listening. Um, these are the people who uh, have been involved in the project. Some of them are from the team or the department that I'm in, Teaching Innovations, and others work out at the site, um, providing uh, the training for the students and teachers. And I just had a little challenge for you guys. If you can pick the two people who actually weren't here that night when this photo was taken, um, you'll get this, this little guy here as a, as a reward. So if you've got questions, um, feel free to ask now. And otherwise, you can just shout out who you think was not there. One of them is quite um, easy to pick out. I think it's the, the lady in the red that gone and watched it behind the Lady in the red, yes. Guy in the white shirt, no. Uh, No. <laughs> Anyone else? So it's yes. The guy at the back in the far right there. That's that's my manager. Um, yeah, the lighting conditions was quite good for him when I was photoshopping it in. So <laughs> but anyway, that's that's yours. So I hope you like Darth Vader. And uh, do you want to come up here and grab it? Anyway.